Hi, my name is Chaplain Bender. I'm the 36th Infantry Division Chaplain. I don't look with fondness upon my time working with my father as a young boy, not because my dad was a bad man, but because working with him meant I did nothing but stand for countless hours doing nothing but holding a flashlight so he could see to do all the work. And for a kid who I'm pretty sure had ADD before ADD was a thing, that was sheer torture. Until one day while working in the yard, the weed eater went out. I took the weed eater to my father and explained what happened and he surveyed the situation and then called for five or six tools to be brought to him, which I dutifully retrieved. When I returned, I began to hand my father the tools, fully expecting him to go to work to fix everything, but instead he said, no, you take this screwdriver and remove the casing. And he then began to instruct me step by step on how to completely disassemble and reassemble that weed eater. And when I finally got it all back together, I gave the string a mighty pull and nin -nin 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 -nin, it fired up and my chest swelled and my head was lifted and I fully expected someone to come around the corner and give me a man card because I was fixing stuff. Now, Elijah reached a point in his life where he was depressed. He was disappointed with God because God was not doing what he thought God should be doing. So he went to Horeb, the Mount of God, to make inquiry. And when he arrived, God asked him, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he replied with a litany of complaints which can be boiled down to this one question. God, where are you in all of this? Some of you may today be where Elijah was in his day, disappointed with God, wondering where God is in the midst of all this as your world crumbles to pieces. To answer Elijah's question, God patiently invited him to come to the mouth of the cave where he had been hiding. And the Bible says the Lord passed by and a great wind stirred and blew with such a fierceness that the very rocks began to split. But God was not in the wind. And then the ground began to shake and the earth quaked until the very mountains themselves began to move. But God was not in the earthquake. Then a fire broke out that consumed all within its path. But God was not in the fire. And then came a low, gentle whisper. And Elijah hid his face. Because there, not in the extraordinary displays of power, but in the ordinary, everyday, common experience of a gentle breeze from a soft summer's wind, I assure you, beloved, God is present with you, just maybe not in the places you are looking. God is in the 85-year-old doctor who came out of retirement to treat coronavirus patients at great risk to his own life. God is in the gentleman who generously mowed another family's lawn because the father of that family is currently deployed during this crisis. God is in the kindly person who picked up three gallons of milk on a grocery run and gave to their elderly neighbors. God is in countless unnamed, unnoticed acts of kindness committed all around the world because God is a good, good Father who delights in allowing His children to participate with Him in the work, the divine work of fixing stuff. God delights in allowing his children the inexpressible, incomparable, divine joy of being the miracle. Jesus once asked his parents a question, do you not know I must be about my father's business? I can't think of a more pertinent, relevant question to ask today. Saints, the world is hurting. Do you not know we must be about our father's business. Do work, sons and daughters of God. Be the blessing. Be the miracle. <laughs> There's no joy like it.